Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the five goals I have set for myself in 2022. I didn't actually set a resolution this year. Instead of setting a resolution, I decided to just go ahead and set some goals for myself. I feel like there's less pressure that way. And that brings me to my first goal, which is read a book a month. As a kid, growing up, I always had my nose in a book. Reading was my favorite way to spend time. I would immerse myself in the pages of a book for hours and so much time would pass without me even realizing it. When I became a mom, I always told myself that there just wasn't enough time for me to read books anymore. But the reality is, there is enough time for anything if I make it a priority for myself. Reading is important to me and though I haven't read books or a whole book in a really long time, I want to make it a point to read at least one book a month. I wanna try reading for at least 20 minutes every single day. I think that I can manage this. I think it's possible, and as long as I make reading a priority and not just something that I'll get to if I have time, then I will be able to succeed at this. The second goal I have for myself is to work out daily. While I was not on top of reading in 2021, I was very much on top of my fitness. I was so dedicated to working out and would literally complete four to eight week programs consecutively. There were times where I didn't even really have breaks. I would just keep working out and I continued that almost the entire year. I loved working out because not only did it benefit me physically, but also mentally. At the beginning of last year, I got hit really hard with postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression. And I do still suffer from anxiety. I have my whole life. And I've noticed during the pandemic, it's gotten a lot worse, which is to be expected. I know that's the case for a lot of people. But something that really helped me cope with that postpartum anxiety and depression was working out. Now, I don't want to say that that was like a band-aid and fixed everything for me because in truth, I did start taking antidepressants for my anxiety and started seeing a therapist. And I am very open about that. I talked about that before on my channel. So I don't want people to think that working out is solely what helped me through that. So please do not think that working out is the solution to helping your mental health. In my case, it was a really helpful tool along the way while I was struggling very badly. Last year, when I was at my most active and worked out every single day, I had felt amazing. I felt like once I got my workout in, I was so productive because it was such a great way to start the day and it just made me wanna keep on going with that productivity. And I felt amazing. I truly felt amazing. And I just really want to get back to that feeling. When I do my workouts, I have to work out first thing in the morning. No exceptions. If I save my workout for the afternoon, I will more than likely not do it just because I am so not an afternoon workout person. I have to work out first thing. Like I'm talking, get out of bed, throw workout clothes on, or even better sleep in the workout clothes and jump out of bed and just do it. Just do the dang workout because otherwise I will push it off and motherhood makes it especially easy to do that and get distracted and not stick to those workouts. And everyone is different, so you may actually get the best workout in if you work out in the afternoon, which is wonderful. You really just have to figure out what your most opportune time for that kind of thing is. Especially with motherhood, you really have to kind of fit it in where you can. And for me, the best place to fit it in is before Grayson wakes up. I don't wanna be all talk and no action, so I do intend to start waking up earlier, eventually getting back to my 4 a.m. wake up time so I can work out and drink my coffee and just kind of enjoy my morning, read or edit my videos and just have some me time before Grayson wakes up. My third goal for 2022 is to keep our space clutter free. Prior to becoming a mom, I was a mess. I had stuff coming out of every drawer, cabinet, closet, like everything was everywhere and i was overwhelmed and stressed and anxious and felt like i had not gotten anything done throughout the day every time i laid my head down on my pillow to go to sleep something that really contributed to that feeling was how much 
stuff we had. It all came down to stuff. As I've mentioned, I suffer from anxiety and I did not know it at the time, but being surrounded by so much stuff is what made me feel even more out of control and overwhelmed and anxious. You could definitely say that being surrounded by too much stuff was a serious trigger for my anxiety. I always struggled with the idea of getting rid of anything, literally anything, you guys. I'm the person that kept every single card I've ever been given. We used to have an outdoor storage closet in our old unit of our apartment. It's probably like four feet by eight feet long. I am embarrassed to say it was literally full of stuff. Like talking probably close to to the roof. There was so much stuff in there. Everything that I had accumulated throughout my life ended up in that closet and it was really bad. It was not until I was pregnant with Grayson that I accepted that I needed to get rid of a lot to make room for him and to prepare for this new chapter in our lives. And that's exactly what I did. I went through boxes and boxes of stuff, you guys, and just downsized so much. Not enough, but so much. And parted with a lot. And Kevin was very proud because he knew how hard it was for me to get rid of things. So last January, as we usually do in the beginning of the year, we decided to declutter. January 1st, we were literally decluttering everything. We got rid of so many bags of things, you guys, that we were shocked and kind of embarrassed, <laughs> like how much stuff we had that we didn't even use or that we didn't even realize that we had. This year, it was the same thing. You know, we, we decided it's January, it's a time to kind of start fresh and new and with a clean slate, so let's declutter and reorganize our entire apartment. And that is what we did. We went through every single space, including the boxes in our garage that we had Christmas decorations, fall decorations, and other things in, and we got rid of more stuff. We even got rid of Christmas decorations that we literally don't use anymore because they're pink and we use them for our old living room, which was like a pink color. We had like champagne and we had all these pretty colors. Well, our living room is obviously more neutral and natural colors now, so we didn't need that stuff anymore. Last year, I would have refused to part with it because I would have been like, that was our first Christmas in this apartment and it was so special and I don't wanna get rid of this stuff because what if we do a pink Christmas again in the future? But this year, I was totally changed. I was like, get rid of everything. Like, it's fine, we don't need it. And I still feel that way. I just feel so much more relaxed and at ease when we have less stuff. Every time that we go through and declutter, we're shocked to find that we still have more stuff to get rid of. We actually got rid of like three trunkfuls of stuff this year. I can't even tell you guys how good it feels to not be surrounded by clutter. We've even gotten more minimal with our decor because we're like, it's just, too much, you know? We don't need that much. Ultimately, what we've learned the last couple years is that when our space is clutter-free, our minds are clutter-free, and there is more room in our minds for the important things. Does Grayson make messes and get toys all over the living room? Yes. <laughs> is it sometimes a tornado in his bedroom or in our living room? Absolutely, 100% yes. But what I try to do to control that and keep it, you know, more clutter-free is clean up those toys after he goes down for a nap or before he goes down for a nap, we'll clean it up together or he'll help as best as he can. Our couch also has a chase with storage underneath. So in that we have a little bin that we have Grayson's toys in and I will every so often go through and rotate those toys so he has different toys to play with. But usually for the most part, if he's out here, those are the toys he plays with, everything that's in there. We try not to bring toys from the bedroom in here if we can help it because that helps control the mess a little bit more. Another thing we are using this year or utilizing is the phrase, everything has a home. So if we have just gotten home and I have the diaper bag and groceries, mail, you know, etc., around me, and I just like drop it where I am and go on to something else that actually makes more of a mess and takes more time from my day later when I could be doing something else that's more important. So we try our best, we're not perfect at it, but we try our best to abide by the everything has a home idea and just make sure that, you know, if we get the meal, we go through it right away. We don't just leave it on the little pony wall and get to it later. Same thing goes for groceries. When we get home, we get our groceries, we put the groceries away. We don't wanna just like leave everything out. 
We also try to make sure that, you know, dishes stay in the dishwasher or if the dishwasher needs to be unloaded, we unload it right away. So that way we're not just like letting the dishes pile up in the sink. And like I said, we have Grayson's toys in here, which is really helpful. So that's a good tip is to try to find places that you can store toys in your living room if you don't have a playroom or anything of that sort like we don't. So that way your kid has access to their toys and they're also easy to just put away really quickly. The fourth goal I have for 2022 is to spend less time on my phone. It is no secret that I have a problem with my phone. I have talked about this in numerous videos in the past. Too often without thinking, I will just pick up my phone and start scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, you know, any social media platform and not even realize I'm doing it. It's embarrassing to admit this, but I prioritize the lives of strangers on Instagram and in Instagram stories even more so than I do my own life sometimes. And I wanna put a stop to that. And within that, I also have a goal for myself one month. So for 30 days in 2022, I want to go social media free, you know, not use social media for a full 30 days. I really think that doing that will help cleanse my mind and give me a reset. And it might even result in me wanting to get off of social media altogether if it's a positive experience. I have caught myself not actually listening to what Kevin's saying because I'm on my phone. And it's actually something that has come up in quite a few arguments because understandably, Kevin gets frustrated by it, you know? He's like trying to tell me something and if I'm distracted by my phone, I'm not giving him my full attention and that's not fair to him. I've even noticed there's times where Grayson starts to swat at my phone and wants me to put it down. And you know, that's a really big red flag. When your one-year-old is like trying to get your attention and they're like, put your phone down because they recognize that is the source of your distraction, that's when you know something has got to change. I've gotten a lot better about being on my phone around Grayson, but I can still work on it and I can definitely be on my phone a lot less around Kevin. So that is something that I really, really intend to stick to in 2022, being on my phone less. It's not only better for me, but also for my family. And the way I see it, phone usage going down equals better mental health. And the fifth and final goal I have for myself is to stick to a daily routine. Ever since I can remember, I have always loved planning out my day. I was happiest with a set plan, a known objective, a schedule. As I grew up though, I really started to abandon that sense of structure and settle for getting as much possible done as quickly as I can before I had to close my eyes and go to bed at night. I would wait until the last minute to do things, even the important things that were on my to-do list, and that would lead to me being unnecessarily stressed out. And I continued to live this way for several years, through college and even my first couple years of marriage to Kevin. It wasn't until I was pregnant with Grayson that I realized I needed to completely change this about myself. The best way I figured I could prepare myself was to start establishing a routine in my day. And my sister-in-law actually helped me with this. She gave me this really great idea to start setting alarms to remind myself for, to go from one task to the next, just to get in the habit of having a specific routine. Once I had established a solid routine, I was hooked. You know, we were and still are in the middle of a global pandemic. And so being pregnant in a pandemic was very defeating. It was very stressful and it really makes you feel a total lack of control. With so much uncertain and so much unknown about the future, having that daily routine for myself really helped me feel more in control of my life. In 2022, I want to get back to a more solid routine, especially in the morning. I want to wake up, work out, drink my coffee, and either have my me time with reading a book or work on editing a video all before Grayson wakes up. Now, I know every day will be different and there are going to be days where I cannot stick to my routine and that's okay. I'm okay with that. But knowing that I have an established routine is still something that brings me a lot of peace and helps me with my anxiety. Being able to have me time before your child even gets out of bed is such a good feeling, you guys. Getting back into that routine is gonna take a little bit of work on my part just because I'm gonna have to get back into the swing of waking up at 4 a.m. every morning, 
but I know that once I do, it'll be so worth it. And the way I plan to try to get back to that is slowly waking up earlier each day. So I'd say right now I wake up at 5.30, so I would probably start trying to aim for five and then 4.45 or 4.30 and inch my way back until I am eventually waking up at 4 a.m. again. So those are the five goals I have set for myself in 2022. I am so excited that I got to share them with you and I will of course update you as the year goes on on how I'm doing with those goals. But I would love if you commented down below and told me one of your goals for this year. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed watching. And to see more videos from me, be sure to subscribe.